bringing old ships to life. During World War I, there were hundreds of auxiliary cruisers. These types of ships were converted commercial vessels to be used as cruisers, mounted with guns and other weaponry. One of these ships was the SMS Wolf, and this is the story of how a simple freighter became one of the most feared ships of Germany at sea. The Wolf was initially built by the Flensburg Shipbuilding Corporation for the Hansa Line as the Wachtfels. The small freighter was around 5.810 gross registered tons, measured 135 meters long, 17.1 meters wide, and had a draft of 7.9 meters. And she could run a top speed of 11 knots. She was launched on March the 8th, 1914 and later entered the service in April. Wachtfels was commissioned by the German Navy in May 1916, when she would be renamed the Wolf. Fitted with 2-inch guns, other smaller machine guns and torpedo tubes, and she was capable of planting nearly 465 mines. Wolf would depart in late November 1916, and till the end of the war she would remain at sea. After making a successful transit to the open sea by December the 10th, her crew laid the first mine barriers in South Africa, and later in other entrances, such as Bombay and Colombo. After this, they had finished laying out the mines by February the 19th, from which they began hunting enemy merchant ships. Ironically, the first ship the wolf had captured was actually a ship of the same class. The now British flagged SS Turiatella, which started life as the Gutenfels in 1906. She was seized by the British in 1914 while in enemy port. On February the 27th, the Turiatella was captured by the Wolf, sending over 30 men to take control of the ship, after which the crew of the Turiatella was taken prisoner and the Turiatella was assigned a new crew. She would be renamed Iltis, and she would be armed with 25 mines and a 12-pounder gun. However, before a week had passed, Iltis was scuttled after an inescapable encounter with the HMS Odin on March the 5th. During the month of March, the wolf would go on a spree, capturing and sinking three more British ships, freighters Juma and Wordsworth, along with the sailing ship D, which altogether totaled 8.830 gross tons, minus the Iltis. By this point, the wolf was in need of some repairs, so she anchored around 600 miles north of New Zealand on May the 22nd. Ten days later, on June the 1st, a steamer was spotted on the horizon. Now, one major advantage of the wolf was that the ship carried a seaplane close to her poop deck. Now the name of this seaplane was the Wolfchen. The crew rushed to get the plane airborne, 
and scout the unknown steamer, dropping a note which stated, Do not use wireless. Stop your ship immediately. And dropping a warning bomb, which resulted in the crew surrendering. The steamer was identified as the 3.947 Gross Ton Ship Wariuna. Both ships sailed to Sunday Island, where they anchored, and Wolf's crew took any valuable assets, such as coal, which the Wariuna was carrying more than one. 0.200 tons of, also resupplying on foot, which the freighter was carrying a load of cheese, milk and meats. On June the 17th, when the captured ship was no longer of value to the wolf, they scuttled her with explosives and continued on. She would lay out two more minefields, but wasn't able to complete the third one, due to a close encounter with a British warship. The crew laid out a fourth minefield off of Singapore on September the 3rd. After this, the crew celebrated, as they anticipated that the ship would steam to a neutral port. By then, the ship was at sea for 277 days, but plans didn't go through. On September the 26th, they encountered a Japanese passenger cargo ship, the Hitachi Maru. Wolf fired two warning shots and ordered the ship to stop, but Captain Tomonoga ignored the warning shots and had men stationed on her 4.1 inch guns. The captain of the wolf saw this happening and assumed it to be preparations for an attack and ordered to open fire on the Hitachi Maru. 14 men would die and 6 wounded on a Japanese ship before Captain Tamanoga surrendered. The ship was carrying valuable cargo and passengers, so the captain of the wolf decided to have another prize. At the end, all the passengers and crew of the Japanese vessel were taken aboard, and the two ships continued to sail together. Captain Tamanoga became more depressed about his situation and disappeared, leaving behind a Buddha statue and a letter stating that he committed suicide by jumping off the ship. On November the 7th, when all the supplies of the Hitachi Maru were depleted, she was scuttled using explosives. Three days later, they would capture a Spanish ship, the Egots Mandy. Despite it being a neutral vessel, the cargo ship was carrying around 5,000 tons of coal, which was for the British Navy. But her neutrality was overlooked by the fact the ship was carrying coal to the enemy. Wolf took a thousand tons of coal, and she and her prize set out for Germany. On February the 24th, 1918, the two ships encountered thick fog, and the Egots Mandy wandered until she grounded off of Denmark, where POVs and other souls were taken off the ship. Wolf realizing that the ship was grounded, decided to abandon the ship and steam for Germany. After 455 days at sea, Wolf returned to port with 
467 POVs and captured 14 ships, which equaled 38.391 gross tons. Another 13 ships were sunk by the mines laid by Wolf, which totaled 57.862 gross tons. Now, after the war, Wolf was ceded to France, and she would be renamed the Antinois, and continue her post-war life under the French flag. One of the most dangerous ships of World War I was scrapped in Italy in 1931. And that marks the end of a video. Did you guys enjoy it? I certainly hope you did. Firstly, a big thank you. We have reached our goal. A thousand subscribers on the old Shipping Lines YouTube channel. It blows my mind, really, that so many of you guys actually like and enjoy my content. Um, it means so much to me, personally. So, of course, there shall be a thousand subscriber special video but I will explain how it works in a other video. Um, so again, a big thank you from the deepest of my heart. And uh, this voyage has been amazing so far and I hope it will never end. Um, so like I said, I hope you enjoyed this video of the SMS Wolf. Um, you certainly didn't want to meet this ship in the First World War. Um, if you have any comments or thoughts on this video, please leave them in the description down below. I love reading your guys' comments and I respond to every and each one of them. So again, if you have comments or thoughts, leave them in the description down below. And if you have friends who like ships or ocean liners, please show them my channel. Um, and with that out of the way, guys, I wish you a good night or day wherever you are. And we will see each other on the next video. Goodbye. Follow old shipping lines on social media. Thanks for watching.